My name is Alex and welcome to How to Get Involved with Perry Stroke and Days. Over the next 10 minutes, I'll take you through the very basics of organising the event as part of a fantastic free community festival, which takes place each September. We'll go through the key dates and deadlines you won't want to miss and the little things which are going to make all the difference when planning, registering and running your event to make sure that you and your organisation make the most of being involved with Heritage Open Days. And most importantly, you and your visitors enjoy taking part. Here we have our annual cycle with the festival taking place in September. Each part of this cycle is just as important as the other. You need to plan, register, market, run it and evaluate it. Here we have the timeline when planning for your Heritage Open Days event. At the beginning of March, event registration opens for the year. It isn't a race to submit your event details and do take the time to decide what you're capable of doing for your event. Throughout spring, we also have our training webinars, which have lots of information about planning for your event, including details about our annual theme and how you can get involved. Also, we run our community cafes throughout the year, giving you the opportunity to meet with other organisers to discuss plans and share ideas. At the beginning of May, we send out our long lead press release, which are designed by the for the September glossy magazines because their print deadlines are really early, so we need the details as soon as possible. This leads on to our first top tip when planning for your HODS event, which is to register your event with us as soon as possible so that we can provide you with as much promotional support. Our online event directory goes live in June, and this is where members of the public and the press can start to see what is happening during the festival. If you want to make sure that your event is on the directory when it launches, do make sure that your event is submitted to us by May. Also, if your area usually produces a local leaflet, it's around this time that they require information about what is taking place. The final registration deadline is at the beginning of August. That might sound very early when the festival doesn't take place till September, but we have to process every event that comes in, particularly those that need our insurance. And that gives us around a month to make sure that every event appears on that event directory. The events which register early are much more likely to catch our attention and then we can do more to promote and help you. You can amend your event right up until the festival itself because plans do change, so please send us any updates before your event takes place. The festival then runs for 10 days each September, starting on the second weekend of the month. We finally have our festival feedback deadline, which is really crucial for us to evaluate how the festival went each year and how we can improve for future years. So we do not dictate what heritage is and it's entirely up to you what you want to share with your visitors. However, we do have three main entry criteria for you to join in with the festival fund. It's totally free to register your event for Heritage Open Days, but your event must also be free from entrance to exit for visitors and attendees. Whilst your event must be free, you're welcome to ask for donations or you can sell snacks and refreshments or offer membership opportunities too. Your event must also take place across the festival dates. And this can be any day or every day over the festival. Your event can be 24 hours a day for 10 days. You might be exhausted after this, or you can do one guided tour at any time, just as long as it happens over the festival period. And finally, your event must offer something which isn't normally available for free. We're really keen to emphasize the offering something special part of our entry criteria. It could be anything from providing behind the scenes access, provide stewards or guides to answer questions, or you could create a trail just for this particular event. This does also apply for digital events too, so your event can't just link to your website, which has information and activities, which are available at other times of the year. Here are a few examples of what works well with Heritage Open Days events, with reenactments, film screenings, treasure hunts and trails. There are lots of opportunities for you to try something new without the pressure of a paying audience. There are numerous case studies and other event examples available on our website. So now you're ready to register your event and you can do this through the organizer area of the website, which you can request a login for if you haven't done so already. The organizer area is your one-stop shop for all you need when organizing your HODS event. If your organization has taken part before, you can find archived events from previous years and update these details for this year. Or if it's your first time, then you can just start from scratch. There is lots of registration guidance and tips available on how to fill in the forms. And if you get stuck, we're here to help. 
Within your organizer area, you can also access lots of guidance and support materials so that you don't need to do everything from, from scratch. We have our guidance packs full of hints and tips, including our get started pack, managing the media and our annual theme too. We also provide free public liability insurance if you don't have your own cover. This is secondary cover, but it's there if you need it. And we also have our promotional materials, which you can request to be delivered or download yourself. This could be anything from our Bantam and Banners to our PowerPoint presentation template slides. Every event which takes part in the festival has to be registered on our website. So we've put together some top tips to make sure that your event entry stands out when it appears on our online event directory. Our first top tip is to make sure you include an image of your event entry. Just one really colorful and intriguing image can make a difference and really make your event stand out. This will not only be the first thing which potential visitors will see, but it will be crucial for us when promoting your event with local, regional and national press. Secondly, a snappy title and detailed event description can go a long way in encouraging potential visitors to find out more about your event. Can you make your words come alive by using adjectives? Is it unique? Is it fascinating? Is it vibrant? Can you try and include specifics about what is happening? Rather than talking about family friendly activities, Mention what will be involved, face painting, treasure trails, or art workshops. Make sure you include all the essential information, such as location, dates, times, and whether your event is pre-bookable or not. And finally, don't forget to tag your event to make sure it's as easy as possible for potential visitors to find your event on that online event directory. So now you've planned and registered your event, it's now really important that you tell as many people as possible about it as there's no point creating a fantastic event if nobody knows about it. This is all about getting the word out and there are lots of potential places where you can market your event. You can write press releases and social media content so you can tell people in print and online about your event, but also can you tell local businesses or hotels to help spread the word? Also, can you connect with other HODS events taking place nearby so you can share visitors and use word of mouth as a way to encourage people to not just attend your event, but also others nearby. Also, it's a great opportunity for you to use the free marketing materials, which you can request to signpost to your event. Pink bunting, banners and posters are a great, great way of attracting passers-by and letting people know that you're open for HODs. Along with all of this, there is lots of extra help available on the organizer area of the website with templates, designs, and logos, all free to use. On the eve of your event, there are lots of things you may need to consider, but here are a few quick pointers which you shouldn't forget. Have you reviewed your risk assessment to make sure that you and your visitors will have a safe and enjoyable experience? Have you got enough refreshments available so you don't, as you don't want to run out if more people turn up than you're expecting? Also, do you have a donations box ready? Lots of visitors will hopefully be inspired by what you'll be doing and want to support your, you and your site, either by making a voluntary donation or by sign up to be a volunteer or simply want to find out more information. When your event is actually taking place, we have two simple tips. Enjoy it and record it. If you're having a great time and running your event, more often than not, your visitors will be too. It's really important here to check in with other people helping with your, with your event, as you can make a small change on the day, which can make a huge difference for your visitors. Also, don't forget to take pictures and encourage feedback from your visitors. This is a great way for you to record not only how your event went, but also to help promote any future events you may have too. And finally, the final part of the HOD cycle, don't forget to evaluate how it went. Make sure to pack away and store all of your marketing materials. They are environmentally friendly, but also reusable. So save them year each year so that you can use them again for future HODs events. And don't forget to take stock and pass on the feedback. Even the smallest comment or an amazing stat is a great way when assessing your event. Not only can you use this for our national evaluation, but you can also use this for funding applications or follow up news stories too. This feedback is really useful to help improve your event year on year. So there it is. That was the nuts and bolts of taking part in Harris Open Days. If you do decide to take part in the festival, we can't wait to see what you have planned and hopefully you and your visitors will have a great experience. The National HODS team is always available to chat and we love to hear new stories and potential plans. So do drop us an email and we'll be happy to help.